breathful day everyone we have a special guest all the way from Croatia let's wait for them to hop in and the topic of the day is breath and we're gonna hear from their insights these are professionals work with pro athletes and I've been part of oh there he is uh, we're gonna here. Yeah, we're gonna talk about this. Here you go, Igor. Right. Oh, there we go. Hey, <laughs> hi guys. Hi guys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, our dear, dear brother, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Good to finally see you too. <laughs> yeah. Been a while. Yeah. Yes. Always see something. Kids, job, our center, uh, basketball academy. Always, always it's it's something. But we enjoy in every breath. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you guys give us a backstory of who you guys are, where you're from, and your your expertise? Okay. Mirella. Okay. Ladies, <laughs> ladies first. Thank you. So we are from uh, Croatia, Zagreb, and uh, we are life partners, business partners, coaching partners. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's like 12 years that we are together. And I would say that this 12 years was the best uh, years in my life. <laughs> till <laughs> now. <you>. Till <laughs> now. <laughs> And uh, we are basically uh, living and working and creating um, something in Croatia. Um, we wanted to make a difference uh, with our knowledge and with uh, our insights and with our approach in this country. Although the way that we work in our uh, business with our athletes and uh, um, regular people, mostly with athletes, was a little bit different from anything in our country, in a region, and maybe it would be more suitable in some more open societies. But as we like challenges, uh, we wanted to uh, stay here and make some difference and just uh, be impulse for the change, uh, not only in our um, work environment, but in a society as well. So uh, basically what we are doing, uh, last 12 years, we are running uh, one center. Uh, the name of the center is Body and Mind. And the center is basically uh, for the training and diagnostics uh, for the athletes and general people. And the main philosophy and main, main idea of that uh, center is to promote healthy living the living in a balance, in a peace with the body, mind and the spirit and to through the motion and through the breath to find the optimal health, optimal balance and optimal functioning in rest of the life. Uh, so let's say to unlock the potential of, of every people, of every human being who is in our center. <laughs> <laughs> Who is charged with yeah, us? Yeah, you can add something to yeah. not be. Uh, yeah, you, you perfectly uh, said everything. Yeah, Mirella and I are uh, a strength and conditioning coach. Also, we are kinesiologists, and uh, we are very happy to recognize uh, before almost 15 years uh, a big impact of uh, breathing on our health on the first and on the health of all the people uh, with uh, your work together. Uh, we implement uh, a very different kind of breathing method and uh, uh, yours method, uh, thank you, thank yeah. you, uh, Devan. You are one of uh, our uh, uh, breathwork teacher, breathwork coach, breathwork uh, <laughs> master. And we uh, learn a lot of, uh, from you. And uh, um, every day we implement uh, breathing knowledge, practical knowledge, uh, and science knowledge uh, with our clients, uh, with 
professional athletes, with kids, with recreational people, with people who are under the big stress, with people from uh, management, uh, big, big, big firm, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. And, you know, we were, we were talking, Igor, uh, I think it was last week, and you mentioned how, you know, when you have a new set of a, a basketball team, uh, by the way, do you guys want to talk about the basketball team real quick and uh, the yes. championships? Uh, I, 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 I think I was part of that one year when you guys won that championship. Can you talk about that? Yes. Uh, I think that uh, Mirella and I was uh, maybe – first coaches uh, on the world <laughs> who, who implement uh, breathing techniques, breath work, and uh, breathing knowledge in everyday practice. Uh, uh, so, this, yeah, uh, I, I would just add something. So uh, we started a um, long time ago. Yes, uh, yes, I would say time. a little bit uh, more shy. Uh, but uh, with supplementation of the breath in the practice of the athletes. Now we are working mostly with basketball players, but previously years uh, earlier, we worked with um, soccer player, boxing, uh, you know, athletes, uh, I don't know, handball, volleyball, etc. And basically we were putting the lots of different technique, uh, mostly for uh, regeneration, uh, uh, like um, for the days which are more recovery, recovery days, um, yes. lots of techniques which were helping to stabilize the spine, more like that. But as we progress in our um, uh, mutual adventure into the breath, we were uh, studying from lots of different teachers, from lots of different schools, um, where science meet the transition mm -hmm. in a one spot and there is a unity of the old knowledge and of the new knowledge, we expand our uh, uh, experience of the breath and we get more courage in application of the breath in everyday practice. Doesn't matter is it like uh, today we are running or today we are doing ball handling or today is a game day or a rest day, whatever. We just pick wisely uh, the techniques that we are going to implement. And also uh, we do with every athlete before the starting of the season, diagnostic of breath, which means we just check out how the body is basically functioning. How is the posture? How is he or she in some flow? There is, is there some tension in the body or not? Is there freedom of movement or some restriction? Uh, in which portion of the body do they breathe? Do they de breathe partially in just upper aspect or they breathe through whole body, through the whole uh, skin and everything? So basically, we take some of the uh, diagnostics, also we measure some uh, aspects uh, of biochemistry of the breath, like how long they can keep the breath in, how many breaths they have per minute and so on. And so, according to that, we, we also, also sorry we also use uh, the the science uh, yeah. diagnostic uh, spiro Spiro's. spirometry, running on the treadmill, uh, where we get the science based uh, elements of 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 breaths. Uh, I, I don't know. Say I wouldn't say that this one that I said earlier, it's not science. I would just say that this spiroergometry give us more, uh, let's say, objective results. And this one is more a little bit subjective, but we use it both yes, because we everything. need it both. Uh, as much as information we can take for the players, uh, it is good. So they all do also the uh, forced exhalation on that, you know, machine. VO2 max, we VO2, know the, the VO2 yeah. max, uh, the, the level of uh, CO2, the level of oxygen. And on uh, that data, we based uh, planning the training protocols for all season, but on individual level for every athlete because for example uh, today before we are come here we were together in our body and mind center 
and uh, basketball players from uh, from Sedevita Junior, uh, our basketball academy where we were work, are uh, was on uh, diagnostic, and Mirella doing with them breath breathing diagnostic also, and that's the uh, uh, one of the how I said one of the starting point starting point for where we going with them yeah <laughs> and, and you, you want to highlight how when a, when an athlete or a basketball player first when you're first when they first come in, into your facility and <laughs> <laughs> and and you're you're trying to tell them like hey this is how you properly breathe can you explain how big a problem it is in the athletic world that many athletes really don't know how to breathe yeah yeah I, I said to you, uh, uh, one week ago, uh, for example, I don't know, approximately 90% of athletes uh, don't know how to breathe, but I think there is 100%. <laughs> because 10 of 10, 100 of 100, 1000 of 1000 have a, some problem. Uh, they, they usually maybe 90 percent they are breathing on mouth their mouth breathers and not just exhale on the mouth constantly, In, constantly yeah. inhale exhale during the day during the rest during the training during the game and during the sleep and <laughs> When we doing diagnostic, you can you can see the same pattern for injury, for sleep deprivation, for postural problems, for uh, anxiety, panic attack, uh, uh, even self confidence. Yes, yeah, big, yeah. big, 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 big stress, and sorry, I need to okay. And uh, in the last 15 years, we are, we are done, I don't know, almost over the thousand yeah. di 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 diagnostic. Yeah. And now we see the pattern. You, you can... I can't hear you guys. Oh, there you go. I can hear you now. Physiotherapist from from club, of course. Okay. Uh, you can't separate wrong breathing. breathing pattern from good play on the court. Yeah. Because, yeah, I would just mm -hmm. add that uh, breathing is like a uh, um, biomarker. It's telling us a lot of it, but it's also a tool. Uh, and it has predictions in it. Uh, so if you know to really analyze the breath in a layers, you can anticipate those. Yeah, yeah. There's cer there's certain um, biomarkers that you can blow into, and it'll even tell you the calories <laughs> yes, of, yeah, yes. of your yeah, body yeah. and yeah. stuff. So I, I predict that in the future we're gonna even see way more diagnostics just from a from an excel because yeah, okay. there's so much information on your excel that's only you that's 100 percent you thank you i, I yeah. feel that we may even get to the point where you can do a dna test and see if you're related <laughs> to this person yeah, we, all, we, right. always, we always want to say on our uh, uh education that uh the medical people the doctors and the coaches they need to have more focus on breathing on breath than uh, on even more than ever with yeah. yes. the, the cardiac problem yes. if that you will needs to be yeah. first first but it's it's unbelievable ignorance from the Western uh, medicine and from the kinesiology on, on breath. It's unbelievable that 
we can we still can believe that the 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 science dokazala da su dokazali odavno they proved the the science they proved a long ago that the breathing is so much so much important but still i don't know why they uh don't give the the bread so the, much the bread. bread so much yeah, yes yeah. but the main problem is uh, for example um 15 years ago when we started to implement the bread uh um we were a little bit shy with that because we didn't know is that the right path we were just listening to our intuition and uh, lots of our colleagues not even even seven years ago was like uh, looking at us like very critically what we are doing uh, although we all study even on uh, faculty that the breath is the major uh, 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 function of the human body it is the essence of our physiology and it is affected by everything and it's effect everything <laughs> and still although we know like information cognitively that this is like that but when you say okay if this is so important let's do on that something they are like they were like smiling at us and critically viewing that and in our very small society we gain lots of lots of uh bad eye uh you know <laughs> uh critics what we are doing but we stay because we are together and uh, we stay like brave in that idea and we just expanded uh, the, infl uh, the implementation of the breath in our practice and today we are like, you know, like fighting for the breath. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, um, I do want to highlight Steph uh, Stephen Curry is, is, one, is one player to really look at in terms of the pace of the game. Because uh, in any sport, in my opinion, in order to quote unquote change the pace of the game, you're generally just changing the breathing because you're saying, hey, run faster. Well, you're going to be breathing faster. <laughs> hey, run slower. You're going to be what? Breathing slower, right? In general, breath is the main orchestra in, in this whole thing. So Steph Curry, if you, if you really watch him, he doesn't stand still. He's always running nonstop because he's, he, he un, he's, he's trained himself to breathe in a parasympathetic way. Now everyone say LeBron is blah, 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 but LeBron doesn't practice the mechanical aspect. Yes, he's, he sits and sleeps in the hyperbaric chamber, but at the end of the day, it's not breathing for you. You have to do the quote unquote breath work, right? At the end of the day. And you notice he's a mouse breather versus Steph. When Steph is in resting phase, he's mainly nasal breathing. So what Steph, it, the advantage of what uh, specifically Stephen Curry has is He's consistently running, tiring out the defender. And by the time he gets the ball, he's, he's <laughs> calm, he's still just like that. And do you want to also explain how what you guys are sharing is affecting these athletes' lives outside of the playing field, please? Okay. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, we, uh, we think that uh, our knowledge of uh, breathing and when uh, they get that uh, that kind of knowledge uh, and the use in everyday life we saw on that players that they are they have uh, less stress they are more, more peaceful they are calm they have the more precise movement they are more in a flow when they they come uh, when they come uh, in a club uh, they they have more mental clarity uh, in all whole being they when when someone look them uh, they are more in balance and in in balance in all the aspects yeah I would maybe add that also they get more connection with their body in any situation so they get more awareness in every level of the awareness uh, i would say like this two three years ago i two years ago i did a diagnostic for this uh, team 
And last year I didn't do the whole diagnostic and now I repeat it. So they have like two or three years so we're doing that breathing program every day, every year. So I yesterday and today did the diagnostic and I could have uh, like compare, uh, you know, the results from their people two years ago and now. The main thing that I found it's that those people are become more aware of themselves. They are hearing you and watching you with more presence. They are more, more open. You can see that they, they are appreciating your knowledge and taking the info in total another level, which is not so often for the sport athletes because they are are a little bit narrow, but not because, you know, some genetics or something, because they are totally only in training and not developing lots of different potential outside of that. But with the breath, in a very easy way, they get an opportunity to develop in lots of different areas, only with the breath. So you can see the level of cognition, a level of the focus, a level of uh you know like awareness it's much higher and what i said earlier like confidence if in their cells and in life general and i would say uh i told them yesterday if we could teach you anything in the world that the breath is the most important thing that we teach you and this is it although they they learn lots of stuff but the breath is the one yes because the the, the proper breathing will reflect on all, all aspects, not just only to increase performance right. or endurance yeah. or anything else. And yeah. I want to say something, something more, sorry about that. For us and for you, that's the normal process. Why? Because we know that in the world, it's a lot of science research about and you also make one of them or few to to link between the breathing pattern and the brain and if you if you don't breathe proper properly your brain don't functionally normal and that, that's the problem you can be good on the core you can be in the mood, you can be precise, you can be aware, you, you can be anything. Yeah, and I, and I do want to highlight, you know, in the aspect of being more than an athlete, you know, in the aspect of what you guys are doing is beautiful because in modern Western society, you know, we, they take all these athletes and then kick them off to the curb whenever they're done with them right what about the longevity aspect why are they not practicing longevity habits why, why are they still promoting sugary stuff while <laughs> they're playing which makes no sense you know unfortunately um i saw this documentary uh, nate robinson right he eats a cookie uh back in the day when he played with the knicks he eats a chocolate chip cookie because he, he feels like it gives him energy and then fast forward today you know he's having unfortunately heart issues and and, and different stuff it's sad but you know these type of practices you know yeah, it, it, it needs to be it needs to be implemented in the aspect of longevity versus gladiator sports and now we're slowly but surely getting into the mindset of longevity versus you know looking at these athletes as gladiators and then you kick them off to the side which is not it's actually inhumane in my opinion and and these organizations yeah, it really is because it's, it's, I didn't want to say certain things, but it is inhumane not to have so a surplus of money and not bring holistic practices yeah, into, your into life. these spaces for longevity with so many studies already behind it beyond modern uh, Western pharmaceuticals. Yeah. 15 years ago, I had one great guy, great, great guy from the States from the Tennessee, I think. And uh, on the half time, <laughs> he, he eat 
the gummy bear, the, 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 the gummy candy for recovery. Every, every half time and after the game, immediately, we, I don't know, we had a um, team dinner or something and before or after the dinner, he go to McDonald's and, and kill yourself with McDonald's. But he, he, was, he was like this, like, like the, he was so skinny and so fast and, and, and so everything. Uh, that what you say is the unfortunately true. And uh, the, we have a, a lot of different problems in, in, in that case. I don't challenges. know, challenges, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, for, for at least uh, environment, the bad knowledge from, from coaches, uh, the bad knowledge from schools and kindergarten where they, they didn't learn anything about, about proper food and proper health. We, we have a still in Croatia, a big problem with physical education in kindergarten and the schools. We have a big problem where the, the, we have a, two kids, uh, eight and uh, 13, and they have, a, I don't know, two hours of physical education during the one week in school. <laughs> That's the big problem. We are sick nation. Why? From that pool, we get the athletes. Yeah. Yeah, there is, there is one, one uh, piece of that challenge. Uh, it's uh, systematic. It's a part of the institutions, institutional knowledge, uh, different state approaches, but nothing is related to the health it's very old uh, systems that are preserved till the uh, today. The second problem is that yes. the second problem is that the sport is looking through the prism of achievement in the sport. Every player is a usable, uh, usable, let's say, person. You will be today. If something gets wrong with you, you will be removed, and somebody else will come. Nobody, even in a very small, not uh, like, uh, you know, many um, money, uh, money making. making leagues or something, everybody is only watching you how efficacy or how, uh, uh, you know, you are number, how you, are you number, work. how you work, did you give us results or not? I don't think about your health in a five years uh, in the future. Nobody thinks about that, neither clubs, neither associations, neither even doctors, they think about your health today. Can you manage this game? Can you come back on the court after your injury very soon, as soon as possible? It would be great. And what is going to happen with you in a few years or when you finish your career? Nobody is giving you that first knowledge and then specific, uh, you know, tools. So when we started, we have one motto. It was intelligent approach to the health and with every athlete and with every person that we are working we were speaking not only as a coaches but also as a teachers we were i don't know 15 years ago we didn't have as much knowledge as today but we always have the same mission to teach you how to live the best way in your own body how to be more healthy how to be more vital how to preserve that energy and health through your lifetime. And as we gain more knowledge, we were more, let's say, concrete in that. So with every athlete, with every people that we are working, we're trying to educate them how this tool or interaction can change their life in different aspects and how they can use that to be healthy after the career is gone. But I think we can't wait system to change. Whoever is involved in the system, it's make, make change on their own field of work. And this is the only way. So the people who come to us, they will learn. And this is our mission. <laughs> yes. And maybe, and maybe I want to say uh, in, in a last, last thing for this part. 
Now is the time. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, no, that, that was no time for this, for knowledge about holistic approach, for knowledge about the breathing, about the, the spirit, about the dimensions, about the everything. Now, in this unique time for our planet, for all the souls on, on our planet, now it's the time for share and for, for them to take this kind of knowledge. I, 15 years ago, when I was come in, in one basketball club, first day, and when I told them, okay, today <laughs> we will do the yoga for warm up. What? <laughs> What the heck is yoga? <laughs> Breath work? What? No, what, what is this? They was laughing and everything and etc. But today, that new souls now, 15 years, 13 years, when we, when we spoke with, with, we speak with, we speak with uh, Nicole, with our daughter, he have a, he, she is eight years old. She recognize everything. She understand everything. And the, that kind of the new kids in the new age, and the now the young athletes, 25, uh, 20, 18, 70, 17, they know what yeah. we are talking about and what we teach them. Yeah, but it would be very important for all of us. For example, if you have a kid who is like 30 and he just started a little bit more serious with the basketball, let's say. Now he's totally open. He's not, uh, you know, like programmed with the different coaches. We have like uh, example from our kid. He's 13. Last two years he's in bosque basketball. He knows everything about breath about meditation, about energy of the food, about uh, uh, preparation of the body, about fascias. Imagine that. And he knows everything about that normally as he can speak about, you know, where is New York, where is, you know, for him, this is the same knowledge. So if you use that opportunity that we openly and bravely communicate with the youngsters who are, let's say, from 10 or even earlier, their consciousness can handle it. And we will make a ch difference for them so they can be the new lead for us tomorrow. So it's important for us to be engaged with the youngsters and then we can make even bigger change and impact. Huge, huge, because they're, they're literally the future. They're literally... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will teach us for, right. I don't know, 10 years. Right. Right. And, and it, it, it plays such a, a huge impact. I, I want to highlight, lastly, let's talk about injuries and how you guys notice when implementing these holistic practices with a these athletes and finally giving them like a second life, if you will. That's how I personally felt um, learning all of this with my Sifu a couple of years ago and implementing it when I would play basketball ever again after that. I was like, wow. Why didn't I learn about this? <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I was so shocked of how well I performed after my first, first couple of years with my Sifu at the time on the court that I was like, wow, it does make a huge impact in performance, but just overall just being a human. And you just, you just can see how gradual your body can actually get stronger. Stronger. We don't. We don't need to get weaker. We can get stronger as we get older. Yeah, you are. We are. Right. We, are we are made to be stronger and stronger, healthier and healthier, and 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 everything to be much more beautiful in our beautiful lives. I, I don't know what what you said. For example, I'm 44 now. And I, I'm a, at least at last 30, 
five years. And uh, I'm boxing last 20, 22 years. I don't know, something like that. And I'm still have a three practice per week, half professional intensity. I'm sparring, fighting uh, and, and everything. We have uh, two kids. We have uh, one big center and 20 em employees. I'm a head of performance for that basketball uh, uh, academy. And uh, uh, I can everything. I can do. I can do everything. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, how, how, how you have so much time? How you can do so much? And uh, when you breathe properly, when you eat food, proper food, when you get the energy from all the aspects of nature, from food, from water, from sun, from uh, earthing, grounding, we are doing that every day. You reheal every cell of your body and with every year, of your life, you will be better. I never felt like this with 44 years in my life. I live... Maybe with 20 or something. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no. 22 or something. No, no. Too much alcohol and everything. No. Uh, uh, oh, I, yes. Uh, and uh, because when you when your mental strength and your body strength and your energy strength going in one point, in one direction, you are limitless. You can everything. And we also want to learn our clients and our athletes to go in that way. Because imagine that now I have 20 years, that I'm 20 years old, and that I have half of knowledge now to use all that energy for me. Yeah. World champion in heavyweight. <laughs> World champion in heavyweight. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I would add something because mostly I, I work with injuries. Uh, mostly athletes who came from the injury. So I'm doing that transition from the injury to the performance. And I would say that this is the, one of the best uh, scenarios that every athlete can have. It's to gain, uh, to get injured and then to come to us. Because it is the, the, the space where you can really meet your body, mind and spirit. Where you can really see how you are living in your own body. What the injury teaches you, okay? About yourself, about your values, about your point of view about your body, about your life. So this is the narrative that basically we introduce in the solving injury. We, we do all the proper stuff as the diagnostic therapy with movement, but we add all the stuff for you know, uh, perception that it's really important to change the way of looking at some stuff. Most of the time people get uh, injured or, or they are not um, willing to be healthiest and more powerful human being, although they are, let's say, getting older, it's because they have a wrong beliefs. So if you uh, just work first with the beliefs and making, uh, putting them in that free zone, you are now free to do whatever you want. You can heal, you can progress, you can thrive, you can become something that you never been. And this is something that we want to teach every athlete, give them all, this, all the knowledge that they need to uh, be healthier, uh, one of the stuff that I like to teach them, lots of time they are in a fight with gravity and the ground force. And if you want to be in a flow, 
if you want to move effortlessly, then you need to know how to communicate with those two forces. It's very important to understand the medium where you are living. So this is also involved in our education with athletes to use the ground force. So if you use it, you will need to work through the muscles less and you will have much more elastic energy. So it's, it's a little bit di different <laughs> and not so, you know, education, they, they, they don't have it every day, but we see that to make difference in their uh, performance, in their life general, in their health. And we would say that for now, we are satisfied with the, the things that people gain from that process. And we know that it's good because we have now so much experience with uh, hundreds of uh, athletes, uh, different sports, and we know that our progressive health and conditioning uh, system is, is, is working. It's working. Uh, I don't know, for example, last uh, uh, four seasons in, in, in our basketball club, we don't have any one surgery. Don't have any one surgery. Even we, the injuries was very Yes, minimal. we have some little injuries about um, was, ankle sprain yeah. or something, yeah. but we don't have ACL injury, menisk injury, we don't um, uh, a love back injuries, yeah. no. And lots of very, very small amount of the chronic pain. It was minimized. So which is also confirming you on the like regular basis, how this system is working in application, in a practice. Yes. <laughs> uh, every human being, especially athletes, it's always and during the all the times they are on the inflammations and, and athletes especially but what we are doing with athletes breath work with breath work with proper breathing we decrease the inflammation in our body and that's for sure one of the main reasons why they don't have chronic problems because chronic problems is because the chronic inflammation for example after every game day after the rest when they basketball players come in a club i with them doing the one hour of recovery in that one hour we are doing a much of breath work for low uh, yoga movement, Tai Chi, Qi Kung, everything, everything for cultivating and increase the energy level and decrease the inflammation. And during the one year of season, on the end of this season, there are they're good. They feel okay. They feel changes. And they're healthy. They don't have a chronic problem or some big problems. Less inflammation, more, more space for the blood flow into the brain. I also want to highlight when it comes to the sinuses and blood flow to the brain that the sinuses don't just go here, guys. It goes all the way up to the brain as well so with more blood flow heading to the brain better decision making not just on the court right off into everyday life right and a lot of athletes you know if you have that mental awareness in terms of the mental iq in in terms of any sport if you if an athlete has a really high iq then they also understand that they're also learning from the game in terms of how the game is also teaching them life lessons as well you know how um, you know, you're not going to make every shot, you know, something simple as that and how that reflects into everyday life. So just from them performing on the court as well and seeing how they're interacting with their body, I can only imagine how it echoes into their everyday life, which is huge. And you guys are a huge pillar in that. And I'm honored to know you guys. And 
Thank you for having me on your breath journey when we started, <laughs> when we were doing the couple session. <laughs> <laughs> But, yes. but those sessions was very, very useful and very important for overall our uh, uh, adventure with the breath. Uh, we use uh, the techniques that we learn from you on everyday basis and we teach the others the same. So uh, yeah, we, we, we have a very, it's not uh, important how long it was, it's important how deep it was. So uh, for us, it was very meaningful and we are so happy that we have the opportunity to share that time with you also today but that time was the first time that we get to know you your energy and uh, your uh, field of work which was uh, very inspirational for us and today also <laughs> we enjoy your videos you know because when we think that we are totally crazy or something <laughs> <laughs> then we watch your videos and we are yes That's it. we are on the good way a good path a good path so anyways uh thank you very much for everything before and today and for everything that is coming with us of course thank you thank you our dear brother and uh we're talking about uh next year maybe that uh, you come into croatia uh and uh it that will be will be we will be <laughs> so so much happy because we think that uh you and we together and uh some of our friends uh that we can doing so much for mental transformation and for all the people on the earth to be much more healthier much more better and to live in in love harmony and uh, peace well thank you guys for sharing the <laughs> thank breath you. thank you for spending the time on here thank you thank for you. having thank part you. of the breath journey again thank you. and can you tell everyone because i'll post this on youtube as well where they can find you in croatia and your website please so uh, we are body and mind Zagreb, uh, body and then uh, eight mind.com. Uh, body eight mind.com is the website. The new website is going to be launched on the September 1st. So the, the, now is the last one, but the new one is going to be powerful. And of course, we have our uh, social media uh, channels. Also, it's Body and Mind Zagreb or Body and Mind. You are a manic coach. Yeah. I'm uh, Igor uh, <laughs> Blazin. <it's>, uh... Yeah. And uh, whoever is like willing to to connect with us or uh, you know share something, we are open for uh, the new friendships and new ever sharing the light together. We are there. Well, thank you guys for sharing your expertise and your experiences with these athletes and pushing forward towards progression. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.